Your peace is possible. Your freedom is possible. Your marriage is possible. Whatever it is, the Bible says, with God, all things are possible. It may not be possible with you, with your friends, with your children, with your parents, with your loved ones, with the government, with your job, but with God, all things are possible. So if you are going to step out into that realm, you are going to step out trusting in God. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands to the Lord. Wow. You have something that is more than gold. More than diamonds. More than everything this world could ever offer. The spirit of the Lord within you is more than gold. I want you to go ahead and celebrate the Holy Spirit. Give Him praise. Thank the Lord for sending you the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the seal of God in your life. Wow. He's more than this world can ever give to you. He is more than everything this world offers. I'm proud to have the Holy Spirit in my life. I am proud to have the Holy Spirit in my life. I am proud to have the Holy Spirit in my life. Oh, Mamta Karada Bosa Kaya Maria. Oh, Masekere de Kosebre de Kedebore Babade Sopalania. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Ah, Yamate Kopareke Sopre de Kedebayanamada. Go ahead and worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Give him praise. Oh, mande ko sempre dio, sempre dio. Kira mande, le ko se brande, mano se kebanda. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now you are going to pray. Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the year 2023. It has been my year of supernatural manifestations. I want to thank you for every miracle, every supply, every protection, going out and coming in for your word in my life. I give you all the praise. Come and go ahead and give the Lord thanks now. Give him thanks. Oh, what a year you are having. What a year we are having. Give the Lord thanks. Give the Lord thanks. Masande carredo se bayana masade. Ke ana man sobre de gele mosia mando sana yana masire baba mama shara yade. Thank you Holy Spirit. What a year. What a year we are having. Lord we thank you. Lord we thank you. Lord we thank you. Manto se ke rebe sobre gabardis. Ramba de mondo coseba ile kebo. Rata bande boko to se ke tire jesu. Mendo be se ke ribo se branda yedas. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you for the strength of the word of God in our lives. Thank you for confirming your word with miracles. With signs and with wonders. Thank you Lord. Oh we love you Lord Jesus. We love you Lord Jesus. We love you Lord Jesus. Man shata la kopereke. Rande bote ko se pregede. Randa bo se ke te balaba de la manda sayana na. Randa bo se ke te bore bo si ba yana masiada. Era mama ma yeso perere sayana bo sayada. Ayana masi ayana masi ayana masi ayana shanda i. Sere mo se la mana ma yeda mo si ba yana. Thank you for the healings. Thank you for the healings. Thank you for the healing miracles. Thank you for as many as have been healed. As many as have been discipled. Thank you for the additions. Thank you for the multiplications. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the visions. Thank you for the energizing of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I know that you are aware that next month we are going to Lagos. Yes, so you are going to be praying now. Say with me in the name of the Lord Jesus. As we go to Lagos, we go with the word of God. And according to the visions of the Spirit, 
men and women boys and girls who will be mobilized for action they will be convinced for God's glory in every place and at all times lift up your voice and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus as we hit Lagos in the name of Jesus men and women will be mobilized for action they will be mobilized for action they will be mobilized for action in the name of Jesus the word of God will come strong Yes, Lord Jesus, Mante Cosera, Rana Mande Bosecate, Rekete Cosebre de Gamado Sanda Bayana Madas, Rekete Coteca Sepe de Berede, Mosamayana Matusiana, Kena Masena Masanayane, Kena Mosiba Babo Cates, Lagos. The Lord is coming for you. Oh, man, te kapando rande bababa seto kabaya. Rete kope seke de brande mo sadamando. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now you are going to be praying. Say with me in the name of Jesus. The impact of MTJ Lagos will last for a lifetime. As many as will participate on site or online the glory of God will be revealed in their lives like never before come on go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus Lord according to your word whatever you do is eternal whatever you do lasts forever so shall it be the impact of MTJ Lagos will last forever will last forever will last forever Forever, forever, and ever, and ever. De tama kosebre de ge son baba bayana masi kareke so patea reke to sete banani mato kose kete beredemos barate barate liga boma seko bapata rete kote bosi brombete de de sonia reke to sekete rete bonia iman de borobo sekete. Oh yes, Lord. Ah, in Jesus' name. Now take the hand of someone by your side. We are going to be praying for Edo State. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, the Bible says that the glory of the knowledge of God will cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. Now pray with me, say in the name of Jesus. The gospel of the Lord Jesus prevails in a new state. Jesus is running this state. The influence of the Holy Spirit is the greatest influence in this state. The church of Jesus Christ is number one in this state. We frustrate the works of evil, the works of demons. We frustrate sickness and disease. We frustrate crime and poverty. We frustrate unrighteousness and sin. We decree tonight that the gospel prevails. Healing prevails. Salvation prevails. In the name of Jesus. Come and go ahead and pray for the state now. Mande bada baya nevo cosa lebra nezo lebra nezo rekete kila mando mo seke regedi sobra nea rama mama mo seke kea rekete kote se medea rekete o seke di bo matos lebra di le bo marata bande baradasa rekete o kose pe di bone mo oh mante ke sombri adi la sobaya the gospel is prevailing over this land in the name of Jesus. Oh, the gospel of Jesus prevails. The hearts of men are turned back to the Lord. The hearts of women are turned to the Lord. The Holy Spirit is in charge. The Holy Ghost is in charge. 
the Holy Ghost is in charge in the name of Jesus the Holy Ghost is in charge in the name of Jesus the Holy Ghost is in charge Mande Zakade Ile Barodes Ile Barodos in the Brani Reketo Kosebre Divo Sana Ile Banebo Sibro Gide Mande Sobayana Manda Oh yes Lord Jesus Yes Lord Go ahead and thank him now Give him thanks Thank him for answering our prayers tonight Thank him Thank him Thank him Thank you Lord Oh, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity to worship you, to praise your name, to pray, to receive of your word. At this very moment, Lord, your word is coming to us. Open our hearts and give us understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Change someone's situation around tonight. Let the coming days, weeks, months, and years tell of the impact of tonight's meeting. In the name of the Lord Jesus, to you alone be all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Jam your hands together for the Lord. Please, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. You know, while coming to church, when I, when I saw the rain, I started imagining countries that are experiencing drought. Hallelujah. And I said, I wish we can donate. <laughs> I wish we could donate our rain to them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The beauty of God's na nations and the beauty of God's countries. It's amazing. Glory to God. But we all must learn to manage our blessings well. Amen. All right, media, can we have the confession for the project up on the screen? Let's make one more confession before I bring to you the word. And from on Sunday, we'll have the map of Lagos because we'll also be making intercessions again as a church for the cities of the world. Glory be to God. All right, please rise up on your feet. The Bible says, according as it is written, we believe and we have spoken. I believe and therefore I speak. Are you ready? Come on, go to the next. One to go. We declare that God is building for himself a center for worship, praise, fellowship, and discipleship. We know that our God is more than able to finish what he started. In the name of Jesus, we are working together with our God on this project. Our hands are made strong and our resources don't run dry. We have an abundance. of the spirit we go about this with a sense of urgency we march on and with excitement in our hearts we don't give up money in, and building materials come to us daily and always people favor us from far and near our jobs and businesses are flourishing because from these we give unto the work glory to God with the eyes of God, we see the church project completed. With the voice of God, we call the church building project completed. And with the joy of God, we join in dedicating the church building project. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Amen! Come on, you can take your seat now. Praise the Lord. These confessions have been sent across to make sure that you make these golden confessions. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. Do you know that? It can change your life forever. All right. Ready, ready, ready? Tonight, 
We've got amazing topic here. The money-making man. Are you the money-making man? <laughs> Are you sure? Glory to Jesus. Second Corinthians 9 verse 8, the amplified translation or the classic. The money-making man. Glory to God. You know, I shared something briefly today. Some people say that Jesus was poor. I don't know where they, they get their theology from. Because there is no record, there is no record of his poverty at all in the scriptures. There is no record. Jesus was not poor. You can only infer wrongly. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus is the embodiment of God's dream for the Christian. Are you following this? So he's called the first begotten. He's the son of God. How could the son of God be poor in the first place? If God made the whole world and his son is poor, <laughs> there's some irresponsibility along the line. So you have to or say that God created the world. That's why I said you are a very bad boy if you, if you believe that Jesus was poor. Look at, look at, look at the, the intentions of God. God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Say amen. amen. So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient. What does it mean to be self-sufficient? He said, always self-sufficient. So from January through December, God's plan is to be what? Self-sufficient. He didn't say to be broke or to be poor. Self-sufficient. What does it mean? Possessing a few. Is that what he says? Possessing enough to require no aid or support. A poor man requires aid and requires support. And furnish in abundance for every good work and what? Charitable donation. Someone who has not eaten, where is he going to get food to give to somebody else? It's not possible. I will never be poor in my life. Because poverty is not God's will. If you are poor, you are disobedient. <laughs> poverty is a violation of God's command because God said, go forward and prosper. <laughs> it's a sin. The religious people will say, oh, no, no, why we say it's a sin? What is a sin? A sin is a violation of God's word. That's what sin is. Whether it's outright disobedience, sin is a violation of the word of God. Whether you spoke against the word or your life is manifesting what the word of God does not say, you are in the wrong. Hallelujah. The money-making man. Say, I am the money-making man. So let's see some seven facts about making money. Seven facts about making money. We hope to get through all of them, but I'm certain we can at least reach five of them tonight. Hallelujah. Number one. Number one. Take your job, your business, or your training very seriously. Take your job, your business, your training very seriously. Whatever it is that you're doing, take it very, very seriously. Hallelujah. Why? Because right from Genesis, as early as the 12th chapter, in short, he even said it in the first chapter. You see a consistent pattern. And the pattern is very simple. God empowers his people through the works of their hands. So it is a spiritual law. It is transcriptural. Moves from pre-New Testament, pre-Old Testament, Old Testament, and even in New Testament. Hallelujah. So the man that will make money is the man that will take his job, his business, and his training very seriously. Glory be to God. All right, so let's look at a few scriptures here. Genesis 26 Genesis 26, verse 12. We are going to be very practical, but everything we will share today is based on the revelation of Scripture. 
Nothing is going to be said that is outside the word of God. 12 and 13. Now look at this. No, you can go back to the usual translation. That is the New King James. All right. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a what? The Lord how? Blessed him. Can you see that? Isaac was an agropreneur. So the Bible says he engaged his business and the Lord blessed him through what he was doing. Praise God. Next man, Joseph. Genesis 39, verse 1 to 5. Genesis 39, 1 to 5. And after that, Luke 5, 4 to 7. All right. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The law was with Joseph, and he was worth a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Three. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to what? Prosper. All that he what? All that he what? To what? To God prosper what Joseph did. Do you understand it? So the money-making man takes his job seriously. The money-making woman takes her job what? Seriously. Joseph was, he was bought as a slave, so he must have started this <laughs> slave career <laughs> at the bottom, the entry level, right? He must have started it at the entry level, but it doesn't mean anything. He was committed. Verse 4. No. Still Genesis. Verse 4 now. Glory to Jesus. So Joseph found favor in his sight and what? Saved him. And he made him what? Overseer of his house and all that he had he put under his authority. Can you see how God lifted Joseph? Joseph was a reliable servant. If you don't take your job seriously, if you don't take your business seriously, you will not prosper seriously. You will prosper jokingly. Your prosperity would eventually reflect the level of commitment and seriousness you have to your job, your business, and even your training. Are you following me? Luke 5, 4 to 7. Because you see the pattern. I'm showing you now over there in St. Luke's Gospel. You see the pattern. God prospers his children through what they do. So if you have a lackadaisical attitude towards your job, what you're trying to tell God is, I'm not interested in your blessings. Amen. Are you following? Good. Listen to this. Jesus at the time just finished a meeting. In this meeting, he used the boat of Peter to preach. So he's done, dispatch the crowds, go back home. Then he asked the man. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out to the deep and let down your nets for a great catch. Launch out to the deep and let down your nets for a great catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the word, the net. The next verse. And when he had done this, there was, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Listen to this. Listen and listen good. Study your Bible. First chapter of Genesis, last chapter of Revelation. God never told people to even change their jobs or their businesses when he met them. They did that by discretion. Always when he meets you, what do you do? This one, then he makes it prosper. You can't find, listen, you cannot find him telling people your problem is what you do, you need to change it. Your problem can be how you do what you do. Even when he wants to work miracles, he said, okay, there's nowhere for us to buy, no problem. Nobody should go away. Relax. What do we have here? Then somebody has got five loaves. He said, bring it. He, 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 if he meets you today, all right, he's not going to tell you to leave. Go and look for money somewhere. Your prosperity is that in that which you do right now. Your problem or some people's problems is they are not committed to it. That's why you can't prosper. You cannot prosper beyond your commitment level. The money-making man is a committed man. 
In short, he attacks his job as though he does not have a backup in God. He leaves no stone unturned. That's a money-making man. Making money is sweet, but it's hard. I know pastors will not tell you that, right? <laughs> it's not easy to make money. It's not easy. If it were easy, <laughs> everybody would have it. It's not easy spiritually. It's not easy naturally. There is no easy way out to money. All right, let me now show you the law of it. There's a law. I've been giving you experiences, so now I will show you the law. You know, I taught us understanding the Bible. I've been showing you experiences. Now I'll show you the law. Deuteronomy 24, verse 19. 24, 19. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 24, verse 19. 24. Yours doesn't have 24. All right, let me read here. When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to it. All right? It shall be for the stranger and the fatherless and the widow and all of that and all of that. Now look at the concluding line. That the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Can you see that? Yes. Bless what? To bless is to impact with grace, to increase, to expand, to go forward. So when God finds a jobless man, the grace hangs over his head. Until he puts his hands to work, the grace does not settle. Glory to Jesus. The grace does what? Does not settle. Amen. So the way to prove and to tell the Lord that you believe in his ability to prosper you is by taking your jobs and your businesses very seriously. Let me show you one more. Um, Psalm 1 verse 3. You know this one. Psalm 1 verse 3. Well, let's read it. Glory to God. All right. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters that brings forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And what? Can you see the connection between prosperity and doing? All right. So joblessness, laziness, sluggardness, sleepiness is a recipe for poverty. Hallelujah. In short... A jobless man, an idle woman, ought not to prosper according to the word of God. In the New Testament, it's even tougher. Let me expand it. Second Thessalonians. Go there. Let me expand this for you a little bit more. Second Thessalonians 3, verse 10. For when we were with you, we commanded you this. Want to read? If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Read that again. When we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not work, the same man taught us that God is able to make all grace abound. Now he's saying if you don't work, don't eat. Praise the Lord Jesus. Can you see it? So any message on money that isolates work, that isolates labor, is from the pit of hell it will not work glory to jesus are you following me yes so don't just work take your work very very seriously attend to your work pay maximum attention if you are a trader then give your best to it praise the lord jesus now when you start training when you start training reduce the noise please when you start training you have started working but for so many persons they think that until a salary is attached they have not started working not knowing this you must understand this 
It is the quality of your training that would even determine whatever job you will get and whatever remuneration or salary or payment you will be given. Are you following my point now? Yes. So, um, making money through your work begins from being serious at the level of your training. But as we build on, you will see the importance of training very well. And some of the problems God's children have today is because their training season was very faulty. Amen. As we build up, we become more practical. Number two, which will, will stay a lot because this is the number one money-making machine. <laughs> the man that makes money must increase his capacity and value. Did you hear that? Write this down. The man that makes money must increase his capacity and value. Money is a byproduct. It is the result of something. Don't chase money. Money is a byproduct. It is the result of something. So don't chase money. You are still writing. Money doesn't go to where it is needed. <laughs> Rather, it gravitates towards people with capacity and high value. Money doesn't go to where it is needed. Rather, it gravitates towards people with capacity and high value. If you want more money, increase your capacity and your value. Are you still with me? If you want more, you increase your capacity and what? And your value. Now we're going to build on this. Glory to Jesus. Okay. Now I will say that the, the most money goes in the direction of people with the most capacity and the most value. That's what I'm saying. Money goes in the direction of capacity and value. Money has no emotions. Money doesn't care about anybody. Money moves. And it doesn't move because you need it. It moves because of capacity and value. So money will not go in the place of a dying man. Doesn't really care that you are dying because you don't have it. Doesn't care. Money has no emotions. But it moves. And it moves only in two directions, capacity and value. More capacity, more money. More value, more money. Less capacity, less money. Less value, less money. There's nothing anybody can do about it. So even for God, so when God wants to prosper his people, he has to increase their capacity or their value. Else, what he can give to them is gifts. And gifts don't last. Praise the Lord. So let me show you that. In 2 Kings 4, interesting, it's been there since. I've said it all the time. I'll say it again. The prophet of God meets the woman who is a widow. She's broke and her sons are about to be taken as collateral because her husband died a debtor and he was a servant to the man of God and he died poor. You can be a Christian and die very broke, die very poor and God does not care. You know why? Because he already gave you all that you need to come out of poverty. You were not supposed to enter into poverty in the first place. But if you were born poor biologically, you can come out of it. Amen. Amen. So he says to the woman, what do you have in your house? She said, a jar of oil. He said, all right. So that means she could have sold that jar of oil. <laughs> you get the point? But that would not be enough. So she, he says, what we're going to do now is, I need you to go and borrow what? Vessels. Amen. To you, what are vessels? Vessels are simply jobs, skills, businesses, praise the Lord, that God can prosper you through. I know some vessels are very big, like GP tank. So you can have one job that has room for expansion. That has room to receive the grace of God. I can also have a job that is fenced round. Then I'll explain all of these details as we go on. That stifles the level of your prosperity. 
Glory be to God. So she goes and she borrows, and he, he said to her, don't borrow a few. She brings them, and what does God do? He fills everything. And the prosperity does not stop until there was no room, because God does not waste. Are you following my point? Now, when we talk about capacity, what is capacity that money gravitates towards? Listen, capacity simply refers to what you can do and what you have done. Don't miss me now. Capacity is what you can do and what you have done. So money goes in the direction of the man who can do something and who has done something. Now I said what you can do before what you have done because what you have done attracts more money than what you can do. Let me explain it. I can bake. I can't bake. Somebody can bake. All right? Good. So what can she do? What can she do? All right, so somebody wants to do a wedding. All right? What you can do is based on acquired knowledge and actionable knowledge. Acquired knowledge and what? Actionable knowledge. That is what you can do. In other words, you are claiming that you have trained, you have some knowledge to do something. So when we say, what can you do, which is, who are you? I'm a baker. In other words, I have acquired knowledge for baking and I have actionable knowledge. I have baked. Are you getting my point? So the company, I say, all right, you can bake, fine. Um, I'm organizing my wedding, so I would like you to bake my cake, all right? So I approach you because you are a baker. Then I say, what will I say next? I want to see what you have done. Can you see that? Now I approach you first, money has come to you because I have money in my pocket. But the amount of money I will release is going to be dependent on what you have done, which is experiential knowledge. So you bring out your phone, <laughs> one funny phone and the moment I look at your funny phone you can't bake a cake of 700,000 no, 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 you eat my money <laughs> so I'm just first looking at you then you are scrolling you don't even have the pictures, you have to go on your Facebook and you are scrolling at 2017 pictures of the cake you baked so your knowledge is 2017 and I'm baking in 2023 and that's 6 years and a lot of things have changed in the catering world so can you see the way my money is, is going deeper into my pocket instead of to be coming out to you so, the money was supposed to, as I came, I came with all the money. But how much you come out of my pocket is according to experiential knowledge. So I said, okay, have you, have you baked before? You now show me, yes, I've done birthday, one year birthday, five year birthday, okay, fine. Have you baked for wedding before? You say no. Hmm. So how many steps have you done? Um, just one. So you haven't done all those, then I show you something, have you done this before? No. Have you done this one before? No. What about this one? No, but I can do it. Okay, so how much are you charging? You say, I'll charge 500. I'll immediately tell you 200. You know why? Because uh, I don't know now what you are going to give to me. So I don't want to beat you up. If I pay you 200, it will be fine. <laughs> you see that? But when you say, I was the one that baked for that, that show, that popular, oh, that celebrity, it was you. Wow. Then you say, how much? You say, 500. I say, can I pay? You say, I'm not going to go to 200. I say, can I pay for? You say, no, 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 it's 500. And it's because someone referred to you, because now I charge five. Now, can you see the difference? Money is coming out of my pocket. Why? Because you have experiential knowledge. You have done what you claim you can do. Praise the Lord Jesus. So here is how life works for you. The Joseph that would not serve Potiphar would not understand how to serve Pharaoh. Do you notice that all the while he lived with Potiphar, Potiphar was Pharaoh's chief of staff. Wonder why Joseph said he wanted to shave and change his clothes. He saw Potiphar. He heard when Potiphar was saying, I'm going, to, I'm going to meet Pharaoh, have a meeting. He knows what it means to be before a Pharaoh. There are some of us. <laughs> the day somebody takes you to the presidential villa, you will not even know what to do. When the president comes in, what are you supposed to do? So you'll be looking at the man. he stand up. Then you stand up. Then bush you. You approach the president and you stretch your hand. <laughs> Say no. Then he's going to look at you like, okay. You're not supposed to stretch your hand. You know why? Because your body has gone to where your mind has never gone to before. 
So your, ma- your body will now reveal that you are still in the backside. You were never supposed to be in the villa in the first place. So what experiential knowledge gives to you is this. It builds your capacity. So the day money approaches you, money will eventually come into your hands. Every ability to work, take it. Take it. Every ability to do, every opportunity rather, not ability, every opportunity to work, every opportunity to do something with your brain, with your hands, with your mind, with your body, make sure you take it. Glory to God. T.L. Osborne, the great man of God, he said this. He said, do not walk to have walk to become for in becoming you will have that's how money comes to people but you see uh, so what the man of god was teaching us is simple he said if you want money leave money alone become something that money likes you see the way people think people who haven't understood prosperity think about money People who have understood understood prosperity don't think about money. They think about becoming something. Because money will go to the man that has become something. Praise the Lord Jesus. So because money goes in the area of capacity, the quality of your capacity is the quality of your knowledge. That's why I said acquired knowledge, actionable knowledge, and experiential knowledge. Whatever you do, Listen, whatever you do, you can only do it according to the knowledge you have. No man can do beyond what he knows. It is impossible. So if you want to increase your capacity, you have to focus on the know-how. There are different kinds of furniture men in this country. Hmm? There are those that, when you call them and you tell them what you want them to do, they will not even do it. Say, no, we don't do one chair. So when I engaged a a decorator (laughs) for my wedding many years ago, I'm I'm climbing in this wedding thing now. I soon turned to elder. So I called the guy. We We knew back from school, so we're already familiar. So I told him what I wanted to do. He said, no problem. Then he gave the course. I said, land money. I said, no, 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 you know, I don't have time for all this. this it's too expensive. So bring it down, bring it down. So he was bringing it down. Okay, we'll take this one out, we'll take this one out, we'll take this one out, we'll take this one out. I said, hey. I said, still bring it down. Ah, what are they even, is it not me they came to see? Is it the hall? So he now stopped me at the point. He said, Pastor, do you know what? Um, I cannot do anything below this quality so pay this amount and i will now take it above because it is you but i cannot drop the quality he said because it is beyond both of us people will be there on that day and i know how many people are engaging that day of our wedding at least three persons can you see what i'm saying now so without your knowledge there's nothing you can do just the way the Bible says, without God, you can do nothing. Without knowing, you can do nothing. It's they that know that are strong. So capacity comes from knowledge. Knowledge is your license. Just where we have driver's license. If you don't have the license, aside Nigeria, of course, in other same countries like our own, your license is an evidence that you can drive. You are not supposed to know how to drive without a license. So let's assume everything is normal, all right? <laughs> <laughs> a license is a testament that you can drive so when you see the license some people who have license they've not bought car they can't drive they have fit <laughs> so you see, in this country you can acquire a license without having even entered into a car it's in this country and in this country you can be driving without a license it's an amazing country yeah, yeah. but in, in the normal places in the realm of life <laughs> It doesn't work like that. Praise God. 
So knowledge is your license. It proves the level of your capacity, not your certificate. Your certificate can lie. But your knowledge is a proof of your capacity. Glory to Jesus. So if you want to move to another level, all right, look about, be very sincere about your capacity. What do I know? That's the truth. And then what have I done with this thing that I know? Can this level of knowledge move me to the next level? Can this capacity level, can it make me a millionaire? Many Christians are waiting on luck. So back to the furniture guy. If you are not a good furniture man, you will not be a millionaire. Because the people who are ready to pay three million, five million for a furniture, they are not going to pay for the one that his leg is like this and the leg is like this. No. They will have to pay for an exquisite work. So if the poor are your customers, <laughs> it's not a good thing. So if you are not good at what you do, the resources that will be available to you would be small. Increase your capacity by increasing your knowledge. You have to invest in it. Now one of the errors, okay, let me do a fast forward and come back. One of the errors, you see, have you noticed something? That civil servants, some of your parents were civil servants. So I'll just say this, but don't, don't answer. <laughs> some civil servants, all right, worked for the government or worked for somewhere. Why is it that when they retire and start their business, it's not significant? Have you not seen some of them? A lot of them. They've done fish. <laughs> they've done cassava. They've opened hairdressing. They've done barbing. They've built this. They are just moving. But they, were, they, got, they got to the directorates. They got to the position of a director in the civil service. But they can't handle the business. Why? Because they don't have capacity for business. They don't have that knowledge for it. So you can be a very, 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 very successful banker. Or you may not know how to run a business. That's the truth. It doesn't translate. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, your knowledge level is your way to making money. And the more unique your knowledge is, the more you are paid. That's the truth. If what you know is common, you get common money. If, everybody, if a billion people can do what you can do, trust me, you are in trouble. So the less amount of people that can do what you do, and the way you do it, the more money you will get. Praise the Lord Jesus. Okay, why is, why is a, a liter of water is free? <laughs> or maybe... Is it five naira? They don't even sell a liter of water. It's five liters, right? Those people that sell water in their, in their bowls, like five naira, ten naira. How about a liter of oil? Is it not liquid? Why is this one so expensive? Both of them are liquid. That brings us to the next point, which is what? Value. Money gravitates in the area of value. What is value? Perception. And need. If what you do is not needed, you will not make money. Don't worry yourself. Don't forget it. Forget it. If it's not needed, don't worry yourself. You will not make money. Money goes in that direction. Glory to God. Now, if you, as a reference, Daniel 1, look at Daniel 1 quickly, 3 to 7. Then we will now read 18 and 19. No, don't worry about this one. We'll read 18 and 19. Then after 18 and 19, we'll read 17. Are you following me, media? All right. You heard of how excellent and how successful Daniel was. I want to show you why. Daniel excelled because of the level of capacity he had. Now, at the beginning of Daniel, the Bible tells us, you can go quickly to 18. Um, Nebuchadnezzar called the young men in his empire together. He was going to make them his chief servants. However, when he called them, he put them up for training. Praise the Lord. 
He put them up for training for a long time. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were part of the team that uh, being trained, where he said he's not going to eat the king's food. But Daniel gave himself to the training. Now, let me, let me show you this. Now, at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, so this is interview. The chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, 19. And then the king interviewed them, and among all, no one was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. That is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, they said before the king, hold on here, just stop here. After he interviewed them, he found out for himself that Daniel and the three guys were better than the rest. Why? Now go to 17. I wanted you to read this before 17. Are you still here? Let's read together. And as for these four men, God gave them what? Knowledge and skill. In what? Uh huh. Can you see that? Then Daniel had an extra, which was the supernatural. These visions and dreams. You can't learn it in school. But this first two was all knowledge and skill. Praise the Lord Jesus. Tap your neighbor, say, invest in knowledge. So the, your, the value people derive from what you do would also, the value they derive, take note, take note. I didn't say your value because that's the problem some persons have, especially those that have graduated and think that because they have graduated from university, they have the right to make money. That's how graduates think. When they calculate their school fees, they think that they have the right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not how you people think? That's how they think. So graduates carry themselves in a certain way after five years. I, I deserve money. <laughs> I deserve to be rich. I know what I went through. <laughs> no. Money does not care about you. It cares about your knowledge and what? Capacity. Now, the value they derive, not the value that is in your head. So this is what a lot of people do. Okay, I, I was giving an example about civil servants. So the day a civil servant is starting a business, he will invest in my organic table and chair. Waste. He would invest in his office that the clients will not enter into. He will spend everything, he put AC, put all this, because he understands that nobody's going to come back to you because you are nice. They are going to come back to you because of the value that they derive from your service. You compromise your value, you compromise your money. You compromise your value, you co that is their perception. What they think about the job you do. What they think about this job. What they think, their satisfaction. So seek to ensure that whatever you do truly adds value. That brings us to the third point. Let's move a little bit. Be truly needed. Be truly what? Needed. If you want to make money, please, don't force your skill on people. Don't force your service on people. You will be frustrated. And I'll show you how the Bible says we should do it. You see, some of us, we insisted on learning a particular skill. You learned it. And you have discovered that that skill is not in demand. So you are trying to manipulate your way. For example, some business people will tell you, some sales people will tell you that they can sell snow to an Eskimo. Thank you, sir. But you will not be able to do it twice. And except I come back again, you will not be rich. You have to buy, I have to buy, I have to buy next month or next year. You have to buy. So if you tell me and you successfully sell snow to me as an Eskimo, let's say it's Christ Island Eskimo, when I come to church, I will announce that you, I bought snow from you unknowingly. I thought it was rice. Everybody will not buy from you. You will become poor. So don't try to, to, to sweet talk people into buying what they don't need. 
you will never see their face again. So instead of some people to improve their value, they are improving their oratory. They become orators. They will sweet talk you, you will buy yourself. <laughs> but your eyes will eventually open. And nobody goes back there. So tell yourself the truth. If your service is not needed, find where it is needed. If it is never needed, keep it and train again. Many of us, we have insisted. No, you, you, two hours you are trying to convince a client why he needs you. It's too long. He does not need you. Listen to what Jesus said. Let me give you the, the references because we need to move quickly. Matthew 10, verse 14. Then Acts 22, 17 to 18. In Matthew 10, Jesus was saying that if you go and give the gospel to somebody and they don't want to take it, he said you should leave. That's what he said. That's what he said. You see hospitals, they don't advertise. Why don't they advertise? <laughs> we look for them. There's nothing as sweet as selling what people need. So anticipate. Don't try to prove. No, pastor, what you really need now is that while you are preaching, you should be drinking wine. After two minutes, you sip. You will talk till both of us will go to heaven. I will not be drinking wine while I'm preaching. That is what a lot of people are doing. You are selling what people don't want to buy. You are wasting your time. So you will struggle and be frustrated. Two hours here, ten hours here, five hours here, you will give up. So as you are training, look in the market. What do they need? So what is the area of their needs that has not been mute? Don't train and train and train and say, listen, this is what I need. This is what I need. This is what you need, rather. I'm trying to insist. This is what you need. This is what you must need. You must need me. You have to need me. You do PowerPoint. <laughs> and they don't need you, so you'll be frustrated. Think about, oh, I wanted to, to say something. Okay, let me not use a location. Think about taking an expensive product to students. Although many of them are criminals these days. <laughs> Some of them are criminals, they have money. But in a normal sense, think about taking an expensive product to, a stu to students. You know students, they like cheap things. Ooh. They love a wolf, not all, though some are very rich. Really rich. But some are criminally rich, all right? But rich and are rich, right? See you criminals. <laughs> See, yes. <laughs> so praise God. So when you take an expensive, there, there was a fellow one time, he began a, a Gary business. You know, if you're old enough, you will, it's not even a long time, but if you're old enough, you were born in the 60s, like some of us, you remember him. So he was bagging Gary. These transparent white bags, you know. He was forcing people to buy it. He didn't sell. People were not comfortable. They want to measure it. Measure this thing. Forget this thing. You are silly. It didn't work. So he gave up. He gave up. He was smart enough to change his style. Are you following me now? So ensure that you are needed. If you are, you are going for a job and on the day of the interview you're talking, they say, well, the budget for this job is we're going to pay you $500. Let's assume that is $400,000 naira. You say, no, can't, I can't afford to get that kind of salary. So what do you want us to pay you? You say, I want you to pay me $1,000. That's times two. You say, yes. Why? Why do you want us to pay you that? Because companies can, can decide to change their minds. Then you are just talking about, well, I have a master's degree from Yale. I have another master's degree from Harvard Business School. I, I graduated from this at the top of my class. You have not said anything. You are making noise. Noise. You see, you cannot bamboozle them. Because the man interviewing will tell you he has 17 masters, 14 PhDs, so shut up. <laughs> what you must tell them is this. This is what I did in that former company. Don't lie, you. <laughs> I moved it from here to here. Now, if I get into this job, I will make you $2,000 every hour. And this is how I will do it. 
So they do the maths. Okay, even if we increase the budget for this guy, he will make us the money back. So no problem. That's why they will accept it. But if you can't prove to them, they will not accept it. So your value must be in front of your face. There are some funny eateries in this town. I don't go there anymore. They will be keeping adults like me standing. They will be standing, they will be queuing. I didn't do it. I didn't do it when I was in the secondary school. You know them. All of you there, you have eaten there before. Those who you have eaten there. I told you, you eat there, he's always there. <laughs> yes. I went there, you know, initially, I think, somebody first took me there. We, we were there. <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It reminds me of when I was in the boarding school, where we line up. Is it, this one is my money. <laughs> we waited over 35 minutes. Hey, food. <laughs> no problem. I felt it was an off day, but the food was delicious. So my own, I went there. I was waiting, 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 waiting. Almost an hour. I said, I've already wasted time. As I left, I said, Lord, I dust my feet. <laughs> Even if it's oxygen. I will buy from another place. I have never, I've eaten their food since then, but I have not gone there. If you want to go, and I will give you money. But me, I will not do that anymore. One hour to eat. How, much, what, how long does it take to cook the food? If I were to cook it in my house, would it not be ready? Is it beans? I didn't go to buy beans, brown beans. <laughs> but here's the point. There are those who derive so much value they will stand. You get it? They, they will stand. This is I'm saying now in life. Pastor, we go, they, they, that food too sweet. But because um, I don't have so much value for food, if it's coconut, I will stand. <laughs> Coca-Cola, to be serious. I need to put cola and say it's cocaine. Coca-Cola. If it's Coca-Cola, I will stand two hours. But I will not stand for rice. I will put biscuits with the Coke, I'm fine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I even I'm saying now oh, because of time, let us close with this. So my wife has been trying to get me to eat Gadi egg sauce. I will explain something to you with it. For six years now, she has failed. <laughs> it has not worked. <laughs> One day she cooked it, put chicken, put fish. I was seeing her busy. Easy. I said you don't understand. I will rinse the meat from this side. I eat the meat. Carry your sauce back home. I will rinse this fish. <laughs> I'm going to make my endo me and put it inside. This tea, I will never eat it. Uh -huh, you see, that's what you say. He's going to say, if you like, be nice. Now, the crisis, I'm, I'm explaining something to you. I have never tasted it. Are you following the problem now? So it's not like, no, the one you ate us, no, I have never tasted it. I just don't like it. It's just like I, I don't want to use a strong language for it because some of you love it. So I don't just go away with it. So if you pray and fast, I will not eat garden exos. There's nothing you can do to make me eat it. So if I'm your only client for garden exos, you will be broke. <laughs> so once you say eat and eat and refuse, just say, okay, sir, no problem. So what will you like? Can you see? Just switch rice. Okay, fine. Instead of waiting three hours convincing me to eat garden egg sauce, just bring rice and you will be fine. So money gravitates. Once you see unnecessary resistance, it's not just village people. You are selling what some people don't want to buy. So ask feedback. Okay, okay. What do you guys even like? Say? In this clothes, you always say, uh, there are different kind of clothes I like. Okay, fine. What do you like? Why do you only buy once in a while? Um, no, I don't really like this kind of jeans. I love Tom jeans. Then you add Tom jeans. Instead of putting hands, Lord, let them buy baggy. Let them buy baggy. Maybe you are in a town <laughs> where they don't like baggy, they like torn jeans. You have to switch there. Quickly. Instead of spending time forcing people on your product. Glory to God. So money gravitates according to the value you are giving to people. Be very certain that you are adding value. Glory be to God. We've got to close now. Rise up on your feet. Let us pray. Have you been blessed? So we will continue some other time. Amen. Perhaps on Sunday, but I'm not certain. Something else is cooking for Sunday. Glory to God. Talk to the Lord now. 
I want you to just declare that the Lord gives you knowledge, gives you wisdom, and gives you the opportunity to acquire more knowledge, acquire more skill, acquire more understanding for the things that you do. Shanda baranda bonta sekete baradas. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You are blessed in Jesus' name. We close by saying, the grace of God we have received always and under all circumstances we are self-sufficient for every good work. Amen. Give your offerings when you are living. <laughs> you are blessed. See you on Sunday, 8.30. Bye. Your victory is possible. Your peace is possible. Your freedom is possible. Your marriage is possible. Whatever it is, the Bible says, with God, all things are possible. It may not be possible with you, with your friends, with your children, with your parents, with your loved ones, with the government, with your job. But with God, all things are possible. So if you are going to step out into that realm, you are going to step out trusting who?